Hi, listeners, and welcome to My Holland Update. I'm Marianne Manderfield, Public Information Coordinator for the city, and today our guest is Mayor Nathan Box. Welcome, Mayor. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. It has been just over a year since you were elected mayor of Holland, and none of us really could have predicted what 2020 would bring. This was definitely not the first year that I would have expected as mayor. I was uh, I came into office on November 11 last year, so it is. It's been a year and a week, 53 weeks that we've been here, uh, and I just felt like I was getting my feet underneath me back in January and February and learning what was going on, sure. uh, and the pandemic hit, and while it it has been an interesting ride over the course of the last eight months. But as a general statement, I couldn't be happier with the way things have gone in the city of Holland, all things considered. Well, in March, everything globally pretty much came to a screeching halt and everything shut down. But the city did not. The city stayed open with essential services. Tell us about some of the bigger accomplishments through that time frame when everybody was seen as shut down. Uh, certainly. There was there was a lot of uncertainty in those early days. Sure. Uh, as I as I think back to the the first of the mayoral message videos that we did, right. um, one of the first messages that we gave is is don't worry about it. Your electricity will stay on. Your water will stay on. Those basic services, the police and the fire department will still be there. Um, those were real questions that people had in those days as we transitioned from you know normalcy into mm-hmm. the world of living with COVID. Um, and, and what I was really impressed with was the competence and the confidence of city staff and saying, we've got this. Don't worry about it. We figured it out. I, there were mm-hmm. some late nights with city staff trying to sort things out and where people were going to be working and where they weren't. Sure. But there was never a question that this, those basic city services were going to continue uh, and that we were, gonna, we were gonna do the very best we could for every resident of the city of Holland throughout whatever came. And you had stated that in those messages and you did those on a weekly basis to reassure the people of Holland of keep them abreast of what was going on, what the city was doing to make sure that the city didn't close and that things kept going for them. We are very agile here at the city. I, yes. it, that's not something that you would necessarily think of, of a governmental entity that it no. can turn on a dime. Right. Um, City of Holland definitely can. And we actually, for quite a while, we're doing two of those videos a week. Mm-hmm. We did, we would do them on Tuesdays and on Fridays. And I would oftentimes have people say to me on Monday afternoon or Thursday afternoon, hey, what's the video going to be about tomorrow? And I would say, we don't know yet. Um, it all the, the world was changing so quickly and we were having to adapt. We would be here during the day making plans based on the most recent uh, order that came from Lansing in terms of what we could do or not do. Mm-hmm. And it get to be middle afternoon, middle of the afternoon, and a different order would come in and we'd have to scrap the plans that we had. And so we thought we're, we're going to try to do our best to keep the city of Holland informed on what was going on. Uh, and so oftentimes we'd come in at seven o'clock in the morning on Tuesday and we'd mm-hmm. talk about what the topic was gonna be. I would quick write up a script. Uh, we'd have staff members go through it and we'd do a little bit of editing and say maybe we add this or take th- this out. We'd video. T- we'd do the video at maybe nine o'clock in the morning, and by noon we'd have the video out. It was a very mm-hmm. quick turnaround mm-hmm. uh, with staff, and it and that says a whole lot about the abilities of the folks here and the infrastructure that we have here to be able to do those kinds of things to respond to the needs of the community uh, within a moment's notice. And after things got going for a while and into the summer, though things things still progressed with the city, and there was work to be done. There were things on the city's docket. What were some of those bigger things that the city has worked through this year? Certainly. We we had to push pause initially on a, on a couple of initiatives. Mm-hmm. Um, the city council had just put our priorities out for the year. We were concerned about housing. We were concerned about uh, the community energy plan. We had plans in place where we're starting to work on the non-discrimination ordinance. And, of right. course, Waterfront Holland as mm-hmm. well. Um, and we had looked at at our retreat that takes place in January at adding a new assistant city manager position that would be dealing specifically with housing and tax incentive programs. 
um, when, when budgeting questions started coming in and not knowing what the budgets are going to look like in future years, sure. we scaled back a little bit, but still brought in-house uh, the top housing guru in Western Michigan. Ryan Kilpatrick uh, is, has come in now as a consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we partnered with Housing Next, which is a, a housing program uh, funded by the Community Foundation, and said, we want you to come in and help us do everything we can to be able to promote housing programs and also fill a little bit of a gap that we have uh, with our outgoing finance director. Tim Vogley was a, a real expert on tax incentives, um, and that's a real specialized area. Well, luckily, Ryan has those skills as well. So we were able to sure. do that. Um, we had just started working on the non-discrimination ordinance, and we had we had tasked our city manager and our city attorney with getting back to council on with some ideas on things that we could do moving forward. And when the pandemic hit, we knew that that was going to be a big issue and one where a lot of members of public really wanted to be part of that conversation and mm -hmm. part of that progress, uh, part of that process. M there were a lot of people who weren't comfortable coming into city council meetings and sure. speaking at public comment. So we started a public comment email address that gave people the opportunity to speak directly to council. And also in our continuing our public meetings and, and having them in person with city council, we adapted and made arrangements for people to be able to come in and speak with us. Um, and as we had more and more people coming coming into those, we realized we were going to be able to work with the public and be able to get that through. And in, it was in August that we passed uh, the comprehensive right. non-discrimination ordinance after hours and hours. And I think that last right. meeting went until about 2.30 in the morning. Yes, I think uh, so. Yes. And we're, we're blessed to have great weather outside. We had a group, I still think, of 25, 30 people sitting out in the parking lot mm -hmm. listening to the speakers that we had set up. And we had a live stream going. So so people could not, we had a limited number of people in the room, but people could watch at home. They could watch in live stream in their cars. Uh, and we adapted for the, I think we had 62, 63 people that spoke at public comment period that evening alone. Um, we also put in, to get, put in place uh, a new strategic development team that's reviewing our community energy plan. Uh, they have been meeting now and are going to be making recommendations to city council uh, in the coming months on things that we can do to keep Holland as one of the cutting edge greenest cities in the state of Michigan. And that goes in part with the whole purchase of the Tesla. That has been big in the news, and that we were surprised that yes. got as much press as it did, it, but yes. but it definitely did. Um, we purchased, we did, we purchased a Tesla for uh, our police detectives mm -hmm. to use. Um, some people thought that that might it was it's more expensive on the front end, and people were questioning right. that. Um, but over the lifetime of the vehicle, it looks like it may actually save us some money. Right, and right. and we just did one. It's a mm -hmm. pilot program. We're going right. to be looking at the at, at how much money it, uh, we save in that process, what the costs are. Um, and for individuals in the city of Holland, may, many, many people don't realize this, if you're interested in getting an electric vehicle yourself, yes, the, the ticket price is a little bit higher on the front end, mm -hmm. but you can go to the Board of Public Works website and you can calculate what it would cost you to charge that vehicle per month based on the number of miles that you drive now. And the savings are extraordinary. I did it myself. I drive a pickup truck with a big V8 engine. Uh, and okay. I realized embarrassingly that I spend about $300 <laughs> a month on gas. I do a lot of driving around. Sure. Uh, and I calculated on that website how much it would cost me to charge an electric vehicle and pay for an electric vehicle. $9 a month versus three hundred dollars a oh month. Oh my goodness. So there is that a whole is lot of savings difference. available. Yes, it absolutely. is it is. We're really we're really encouraging people to do whatever they can personally to try to help uh, with our environmental sustainability here as well in Holland. Right. And BPW is part of that pilot program too, right? In taking yes, their we, vehicles and looking at Alternative fuel vehicles. Exactly, we're looking at we're looking at the spectrum of alternative fuels for not only vehicles but for equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the city of Holland and the BPW both passed policies this year that we're looking at options for you know for our parks department for electric blowers and electric mowers and electric trimmers. We're also looking at the options with BPW trucks, for instance, with the the ones that have the big buckets on them. Right. They need to keep those vehicles running in order to operate the equipment that goes along with them. And the technology has moved forward that there are options for electric vehicles or for portions of those vehicles to be electric, where it may mm -hmm. still have an internal combustion engine that's running the vehicle, sure. but we've got battery systems that are using to run the buckets on those vehicles. Um, and as that technology improves, the city's going to be investing more and more in those types of things for the future. So those are some really pretty big initiatives that the city has accomplished in a year amidst the pandemic with all kinds of lots of small details to take care of, some really big things that, that 
has kept going. Holland is looking at the possibility of being one of the great places for people to live post-pandemic. People are starting to see that they don't need to live in their big apartment buildings in the city. Right. Um, very expensive rents. They're going to be looking at other places to live. And we, I think Holland is uniquely positioned to be a place where people are going to say, that's where I want to live. If I can choose to live in a place, Holland, Michigan is the place that I'm going to want to do that. And so we're putting the infrastructure in place, both in terms of housing, commercial development, and the extension of our broadband network so that people can say, I can work from home. And and regardless of where I work and regardless of where the, the headquarters is of my company, I can live in this great city of Holland, Michigan, and work anywhere in the world. And that's instrumental in having them be able to do that with the broadband network network in place. It is. We were we were already investigating the process, the possibility of having uh, fiber broadband internet to every single home in the city of Holland. That's still a ways off. I don't want people to get the idea that that's going to be here before the <laughs> sure. end of the year because creating a new utility like that is, an, is incredibly complicated. But frankly, the pandemic has shown the public that there is an incredible need mm -hmm. for high-speed broadband, whether it's Absolutely. for work, whether it's for, for your children. It's going to be as necessary as having electricity or water or heat in your home in the future. And sure. we want to make sure Holland is on the cutting edge of that. With accomplishments come challenges, Mayor. What, what were some of the bigger challenges of 2020? I, the biggest challenge, I think, was was trying to find ways to be able to get things done in this community. We had meetings early on in March with uh, leaders from all over all over Holland, from the, the Visitors Bureau, from Tulip Time, from Lakeshore Advantage, from the, the Community Foundation, Windmill Island Downtown Group. And the message of those meetings and the goal of those meetings was to say, how do we get a commu the community of Holland to survive the pandemic, but also importantly to thrive in the days after the pandemic? And so we've worked very hard with our downtown businesses, with our restaurants, with our merchants in, in wanting to make sure that our great downtown survives and thrives mm -hmm. in the future. Um, and so we've had all of those challenges that have been thrown at us and in, in also in keeping the, the community healthy, making sure that people stay safe, stay healthy, and wash their hands again throughout this process sure. um, so that we come out even stronger than we were before. But while, while there are opportunities bring challenges, I think mm -hmm. challenges bring opportunities. Um, and Holland has done a great job, not just from the city perspective, but across the board in terms of the leadership of this community to say, how can we turn these challenges into opportunities for all of us in the future? What surprised you the most? Uh, the, the incredible resilience of this community. Um, I, I was, I've never been on, I had never been on council before. I'd attended a lot of council meetings and I, I was friends with all of the members of, of council, but um, it was wonderful, the, the warm welcome that council gave me and gave me some grace in learning how things were going, and, and especially when we had to change things up quite a bit. We changed the way that we did our council meetings. We changed the schedule of our council meetings, that, that council members and other leaders of the community were, were willing to say, we're going to give some space here to be able to, to work our way through all of these new things that, that we're doing, and, and frankly, I don't think anybody would say that the, that there was any bigger surprise in 2020 than the pandemic. Sure. We sure. we had to rewrite the rules for just about everything. You know, all of these traditions, all of these structures that we'd had in place for 50 or 100 years suddenly got thrown out the window, and we had to create new ways of doing things. Um, and people gave us the opportunity and the space to be able to do that. And I think that, that was really one of the wonderful things that I learned this year, um, that this community is resilient and has the grace to allow its leaders to be able to figure out how to address the challenges that come before. For us. Anything else you'd like to tell us? The question that I get a lot is so, you know, how do you like that job? You know, is that what you expected? Sure. And much more than I expected, much better than I expected. I absolutely love the job of being the mayor of Holland and getting to serve the people of Holland uh, because this is a fabulous place to live. It's a fabulous place to work and it's a fabulous place to play. Um, and my, my comment more than ever is who wouldn't want to be the mayor of, of the city of Holland, Michigan? What a great place this is. We thank you very much for taking time to be here. We are so glad you are our mayor, and we look forward to more years to come. That's what I'm looking forward to as well. I hope that, that 2021 is bigger and brighter uh, and more fun even yes. than 2020 was. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Thank Until you. Until next month, this is my Holland Update.